Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of my podcast, Witch of the Gathering. My name is Dana, and today I'll be talking to you about lavender. Lavender is seriously one of my favorite herbs to work with as a witch, and just in general, because it smells so darn good and it instantly calms me as soon as i take a nice whiff of it i am instantly just not nearly as stressed as i was previously i even have a little a little oil that i carry around at work to help me whenever times get a little too stressful for me but uh before we begin talking i well about lavender anyway I just want to ask you guys, how have you been? How was your weekend? And most importantly, what are you drinking today? Today, I have green tea, Lipton green tea with matcha, and I put a little bit of wildflower honey in it. And best of all, it's in my Golden Girls cup. Stay golden. Alrighty, so let's move on to talking about lavender scientific name and i will probably butcher this horribly lavandula angustifolia folia angustifolia sure that that works it comes from the latin word lavare which means to wash it is a flowering plant from the mint family that can be identified by its incredibly floral sweet scent and its light purple flowers. Although it doesn't just come in purple flowers, they can also be white and blue. And I think yellow, if I read that correctly, I think so. But yeah, uh, it's believed to be have originated from the Mediterranean, Middle East, and India area, but is pretty common all over the globe. This is a plant that likes that likes to bloom and grow in well-draining and moisture-retaining soil in really sunny places. And usually tends to, I guess, blossom, bloom in summer. Best to be planted in early spring. It is kind of a short-lived plant, I guess, when compared to other plants. Because it usually has to be replaced every five to seven years, roughly. Now, that's not every single case. If you take really good care of your plants, I'm sure that it, they could last longer. So it was considered back in the ancient days, like 2,500 years ago, to be a holy herb. And to anyone who has ever smelt lavender or anything like that, what I'm about to tell you probably won't surprise you in the least but it's been used to help with insomnia anxiety and aromatherapy some of the medicinal properties that it has been used are for interestingly enough uh, hair loss which that one kind of threw me for a loop um headaches, skin conditions like eczema, uh, also acne, and skin inflammation, as well as burns, and even treating, I guess, mild wounds. And of course, it's also been used to help with moods and stuff like that. So it helps. It's a great help for anxiety and depression as someone who has anxiety and depression which i'm sure a lot of you do it is one of the plants that i go to one of the herbs and oils that i use most to calm myself down to bring me to a happier place whenever i'm really stressed out or just not in a good headspace it's 
that's that's one of the reasons why it's so near and dear to me. Alrighty, let's see here. Uh, something that I thought was very interesting was that back in the ancient times, it was used to freshen and give a light scent to clothes and hair, specifically. In the Victorian language of flowers, lavender means distrust, which also kind of threw me for a loop, but I guess once we get on to what it's used for in magic, in a way that kind of makes sense. Ancient Greeks often used it to fragrant soap, and it was often used to attract love and to bring men to brothels. It has been, it has been and still is used today in hand fasting ceremonies, which a hand fasting ceremony is like a pagan kind of like a pagan wedding but pretty much what happens and I'll do an episode entirely on hand fasting by itself in the future but it's using some sort of ribbon or lace or what have you to wrap around the hands and wrists and forearms of two people who want to commit themselves to each other as life partners. So in a way, it's kind of like a wedding ceremony, kind of. But And that's, that's just a very broad, very general overview. So, but I do plan to get into that in the future. But lavender was used in hand fasting ceremonies and still is to represent love, fertility, and a strong bond in marriage. The essential oil is most popularly that is most popularly used is that of lavender, and it can also be used to cook with. So it's great with lamb dishes in particular. I once made this lamb dish with lavender and rosemary and a couple other herbs, but it turned out so good. And I also like to use it in tea. It was really, it's just, it's very good in tea, especially with catnip and valerian. I like to, not too much. I don't go too much heavy on the lavender because lavender by itself, I find in just like doing it as a sort of tea, it's a little bitter, I guess. But when mixed with other herbs, it's actually really, really good. Mm. It is used to calm and relieve stress and anxiety, of course, and other sort of emotional distress. It's an, It has anti-inflammatory properties, hence why it's used for skin inflammation, and it's also used to help with dry skin issues. So you'll find it a lot used for lotions and creams to treat your skin and to help with that. Lavender is used to ward off evil spirits, promote a long life of peace, and is used for purification. In magical spell workings, it's used for protection and happiness. Considered an herb of tranquility, which that doesn't surprise me, it helps, it releases and cleanses and soothes energy. So, oh wait, <laughs> I read that wrong. It, um, it releases cleansing and soothing energy, which that makes sense to me because this plant is big, big, calm, soothing vibes, like across the board. Its aroma brings clarity to thoughts and calms the mind. It's associated with masculine energy, the planet Mercury, the element air, and the zodiac sign of Virgo. Tarot cards that are associated with lavender are the Hierophant and the Sun, which I really like. Uh, for spellcraft and for magic, it's used in love, protection, and purification spells. 
If you inhale it before going to bed, it helps to promote deep sleep and it protects by changing the space around it. So it protects by purifying. It's not one of these herbs that if you're like, if you need something to protect you, I guess from a full out attack, like a personal attack or an energy attack or something of that sort, it's not going to be the ones that you would use to throw in like a protects a protection sachet or something like that. This is its protection is through purifying, through cleansing. So in a way, like how I like to use lavender when I do spell work mostly is to bring a sense of that calm and peaceful energy but i also like to use it in protection so that whatever i need protecting from it gives me kind of a breath of fresh air or clean slate if that makes any sense and, and that's how i use it but it can be used for other things as well and one thing that i've heard and been told and that I've recently started doing is just taking a little bit, a little, a little, a little, I guess, smidgen of whatever herb or plant that you want to use when doing your spell work or even anything, even just cooking and just hold it in, in the palm of your hand and just feel it, feel it for a moment and think think about all of the effort that it used to take and still does in a way but back in long long ago centuries ago all the effort that it took for that plant that herb to be in the palm of your hand and even nowadays with things as technology making everything very easy or rather easier to do it's good to just for me anyway just take a little bit of the herb and let it sit in your hand and think about that think about all the work that went in to having that piece of herb to get to your kitchen or into your apothecary and not only that but take a moment to feel that plant just feel its energy when I hold lavender personally to me, I feel calm. That is the big vibe that lavender has always given me. Now, when I do intentional spell work and stuff like that, sometimes I will ask of it, please, I need you to protect this way or to do this for me. But generally, whenever I'm holding it, I just feel that tranquility, that peace, and that relaxation. And sorry if I got on a tangent there, but lavender is seriously my favorite herb to work with, and I recommend it all the time, and I can't help but <laughs> to kind of gush over it. And also, it is used in banishing spells to ensure that what's being banished leaves peacefully. So this is definitely not one of those plants that, while its scent is very noticeable and strong, and you know it, it's not one of these plants that is going to attack or have fire. Well, I guess in a way it does. But to attack or to be offensive, it is to make sure that things are as peaceful as they can be if that makes any sense and i'm sorry if this episode is a little weird or if i'm being a little weird today i've had kind of a rough past week at you know past couple of days just in my head space but i wanted to talk about lavender because again it is so near and dear to me and i love it so much and yeah so with that being said 
that's all I've got for you on lavender today. But let's go to our card draw of the episode. And once again, I am using Stacy DeMarco's Halloween Oracle to draw from. I'm giving it another quick little shuffle here. I already shuffled it once before I started recording, but I just want to do it a little bit better that way. So what I pull is good for you and me. All right. So what do we have here? Joy. And the card reads, rejoice in the present. And it's a beautiful, beautiful artwork of a woman. And she's in this amber glow and ye of yellow and orange. And there are autumn leaves around her. And that is such a vibe that I crave so deeply. Autumn has always been my favorite uh, season. It's like perfect right in between hot and cool. And of course, it's got... Halloween and that is my favorite so the booklet reads I stand here I am where I am fully alive and present stress is a sham Ooh, I like that that's actually really really nice considering that we just talked about lavender besides the whoo of a not so scary trick-or-treat ghost on Halloween evening one of the most common sounds you'll hear is laughter. There is so much joy at Halloween, and it can be found and it can be one of the most fun nights of the year if we are if we allow that into our lives. We lead busy lives, whether we are studying, running a household, have a demanding job, or all of them at once. It seems there is little time for us to stop, be present, and enjoy exactly where we are at this time. It has been said that the first step of real change is stopping and acknowledging that we actually need change. While sometimes we feel that there is little to feel happy about and much to change, we can always be grateful for something right now, and there is power in that position. It is time to find the joy in this moment, and to find that joy more often. Should this card come up in your divination, it heralds a rival of more happiness and profound joy into your life. It is a good omen. Actively seek pleasure and build more of the things that you personal that give you personal joy and laughter in your life. After all, we build in appointments for the dentist. Why not for our own pleasure? Oh my goodness. I love that so much so much for the card today because that just fits so perfectly with lavender and everything alrighty so with that being said that's kind of all I have for you guys today uh, I just want to take a moment to call out my sources which I used everydayhealth.com the Herbal Handbook, A User's Guide to Medical Herbalism by David Hoffman. The Herbal Healing Handbook by Caradwin Greenleaf. And the Herbal Handbook. And this one, I don't really see an author, but it's Clarkson Potter Publishers of New York. But it doesn't list an individual author, not that I can see. But if I happen to find one, I will definitely post it in the in the show notes. All right. So I just want to thank everyone for taking the time out of their day to listen to me ramble on about lavender and just giving my my little podcast the time of day. I really do appreciate that you guys tune in, however many there is of you, and I hope that future episodes will be a lot I don't want to say better but just good just continuing being good now I'm not going to do a random drawing like I have been the past three instead I'm just going to tell you guys what I plan on talking about for the next two episodes because I have a little bit of a surprise for you guys. So I celebrate the
the eight witch sabbats which i will be talking about next week so it's part of it's the wheel of the year and that's what next week episode is going to be about it's going to be about the wheel of the year and the following week is going to be about the sabbat that's next to come up which is lunasad and then the following one i've got a little bit of surprise for everybody but i just wanted to let you guys know that that's the plan for the next couple of episodes already so i hope that doesn't disappoint anyone or anything like that because i know i'm certainly looking forward to speaking about those and learning re-educating myself and all of that good jazz so with that being said I thank you once again for listening to my podcast and I ask only that you, you know, share this with your friends or anyone that you think might be interested in listening. I also have an email, which is which of the gathering podcast at gmail.com. I created a Facebook page also called which of the gathering podcast and yeah i think that's pretty much that's pretty much it so until next week i will see you guys then and have a magical monday my little witchlings